Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Draw with Carry. I'm Carry, and today we're going to be looking at some basic illustration. Hi there, welcome back. Yes, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at illustration today. Um, so I haven't really done a lot of illustration in the past, and I've got a couple of ideas that are going around in my head. There are little plans for, for projects in the future that will involve a bit of illustration skill. So I figured I'd learn a few of the basics, practice with them a little bit, and uh, I'll, today, in today's video, I'll be putting them into practice just to show you um, what I've learned so far. So my strategy so far has just been to go through YouTube um, and pick up some how to illustrate basic 101 style uh, tutorials, which has involved going through Jazza's back catalogue, um, hence the cringy Jazza style intro. Sorry, just spare a moment, had to do it. Um, if you don't know who Jazza is, um, think uh, uh, an obnoxious Australian who dicks around in a fun and creative way. Um, that's pretty much <laughs> Pretty much, a, doesn't sound very complimentary, but trust me, you should check him out. If um, there'll be links in below for a couple of his tutorials, um, along with a few others that I've, that I've found uh, useful for this video. Okay, we're going to start off just by showing you what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using a one mechanical pencil, one eraser, and then a load of multi liners. Um, just varying sizes, I don't know exactly which ones I'm going to be using yet. Uh, it will depend on how things go. Other than that, I've got my paper, some nice thick multimedia paper, A4, that's all I'm going to need. So I can break down the, the process of basic illustration into five steps. So step one is the basic construction lines. So that is putting in just the basic rough shapes um, of the drawing that you want to do without any detail at all. Um, it's literally just going to be circles and lines just to represent where the body is going to be. In this case I'm, I'm drawing a, a chimpanzee of course because why not and the tutorials I've watched have all been obviously involving drawing people but this is the same uses the same technique just same principles just with different uh, body proportions. So this is going to be a picture of a chimpanzee star staring up, pointing, or sort of reaching for the moon. So there's the moon up there, um, and I want to draw his head here. So I'm just going to do a simple circle um, for his cranium, and then a little semicircle for his snout. And then we want to do a big. Call overly shape here for his sort of upper torso two circles for his shoulders and then a line two lines for his arm and then Another two lines for his other arm, then a big circle for his pelvis, and then his legs coming off here. And you want to keep these lines very light, and obviously, like I said, don't want to put in any any real deal, any real detail at the moment because. The idea is that you use this stage to work out the proportions and the positioning and the pose that you want to go for um, before putting in any detail. So then if you need to change things, it's just a simple case of poof, you erase your line and you can draw it again and you're not losing any uh, any um, time spent on drawing something that you don't have to rub out just to move off to the left slightly, for example. He's going to be standing on like a, a step ladder here. 
I want it kind of tilted at an angle, like it's kind of almost about to tip over. So this could actually be a little bit tricky to draw. I'm trying to work with perspective and tilt it over a little bit at the same time. Okay, so I'm already creeping into the next stage, which is to add uh, a more refined um, construction, so more refined construction lines uh, on top. This is um, what Jazza would call putting meat on the bones, um, which is literally what you're what you're doing in, in this case. You're, you're just taking this, this basic kind of skeleton of lines and circles and wrapping the sort of the, the shape of the body around that. It's amazing how quickly and easily you can you can produce quite a a convincing body pose by using this technique. Just with a little bit of basic knowledge of anatomy, you can, you can make make a body that looks quite convincing. Again, we don't want to be putting too much detail in here. We don't want to be still drawing quite lightly because ultimately this is all going to be rubbed out. Once we put the ink over the top. hands were something that I really struggled with up until spending a bit of time learning some techniques from the again that tutorial what the, the tutorials that I found most helpful will be in the uh, description below um, again this is obviously the tutorials of her human hands but all you have to do is just change the proportions a little bit if you draw her if you happen to be drawing a chimpanzee for some reason Okay, I'm going to start putting some some clothes on this dude now. Um, he's going to be wearing like a, a big, baggy sort of ill-fitting uh, spacesuit. Um, so you might wonder why I've I've drawn in in kind of sort of naked um, to start with, and that's really just to get an idea of where. Where all the uh, sort of the the parts of the body that are going to be touching the outside of the, uh, the suit, you know how that's going to be affecting the shape of the clothes that go on top. So there's a, it's a tip I would have is to draw the um, the body underneath um, before you draw the clothing on top.
Okay, I think that's at a point where I'm, I'm kind of happy with it now. It is definitely worth spending time on this stage. Um, really work now, making sure you're absolutely happy with with the proportions and, and so on because this is the last point at which you'll be able to undo major things and and this is actually the, the trickiest part to, to get right. It's kind of plain sailing, well not plain sailing, but it's, it's, it's a lot simpler from here on in. Okay, stage three is the basic inking stage. Um, but what I'm gonna do first, this is optional, um, but I feel like it's a good idea. I haven't really seen this advice, but, um, but what I'm gonna do first is very lightly, actually I'm gonna get a, um, a kneaded eraser. I find this gives you a little bit more control. I just want to take off like the 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 heaviest lines, just lighten them up a bit because this is the last stage before we remove these lines altogether, and it's just going to make it a bit easier if I loosen them up a bit now, or we'll just just fade them out a little bit now, then I don't have to rub so hard over the ink that I've just put down, or the the ink that I will have just put down. Right, so now I'm going to go in with one of my fine liners. I'm going to go with a point three, um, and this stage is just literally trace over the lines that you've um, that you just sketched out. But nice, you want nice, just solid, straight lines. So you want to be confident and just one fluid motion. You'll notice I'm not tracing over every single little line and squill. You just want the main ones, the main, the heaviest lines, the more pro most prominent lines. I mean, I guess stylistically you could go in and do all this, these scratchy lines. Some people do that, and that works. It's quite nice. You know, it's, but it's, a, it's a stylistic choice. Um, so do whatever you. I would. I would suggest though going in light first, and then maybe adding in those. Um, extra lines later, if you think it will add something to the uh, to the drawing. Okay, I'm going to leave the moon without any ink on it. I want to have that as a nice um, sort of soft line. I don't want a harsh line around around the moon. So I'm leaving that as is. So now, now we need to erase all of the pencil marks and see what we're left with. Okay, next step is to add some line weight variation. So this at the moment is, yeah, it's, it's getting there, but you see it looks very flat, very boring, very, very kind of uninteresting. So what we're gonna do here 
is thicken up the lines in, in particular places. Anywhere where there's kind of a bit of shadow or um, maybe anything, so anything else sort of on the underside here or anything in the crease, anywhere multiple lines kind of join together. We're just kind of thicken up the line a bit and then taper it out so it thins off towards the end. So here, for example, thicken it up in the middle, taper it out towards the end. And we're just going to do that around the whole picture, the whole illustration. It's one of those things that's quite stylistic. You can choose to do this in different ways. You can thicken up it areas in, in to different degrees for different reasons. It's up to you. Just do whatever you you feel looks good. Um, leave this with me and uh, we'll come back once we're done. And there we go, I think we're coming on to the home stretch almost, well the last step at least. Um, and you can see the difference that that has made. If I can bring up a, a before and after, you can hopefully see that that's just given the whole thing a bit more punch, a bit more roundedness. Um, it just makes the whole whole illustration a bit more interesting to look at. So a simple technique that has a, has a really big effect. I, I did that whole thing with, uh, with just the, the same point free um, a uh, fine liner that I've been using um, from the start. So that just leaves us with the last stage, colour. Um, now, this stage is not one that I've taken from a tutorial. So most people will go on about um, Copic markers, alcohol-based um, markers for, for illustration, um, which are like the, you know, the professional option. Definitely would rec recommend if you're just want to get into illustration definitely wouldn't recommend you go out and spend hundreds of pounds on a uh, on a set of those so I my recommendation would just be to use whatever you've got to hand um, coloring pencils um, I'm going to use I think I have decided I'm going to use some watercolor pencils I think that will work quite nicely use whatever you got to hand because if you get into illustrations and you decide you want to do more and then you after doing a few you feel like you're limited by by what you have that's when you should go in and start thinking about um, investing in, in maybe more expensive um, supplies, but um, don't necessarily think you have to go in and buy, go straight in for, for alcohol markers. They are definitely not the, uh, the only option. They're probably the best option, <laughs> frankly, but um, they're also the most expensive by far. So um, I am considering the Ahuhu uh, markers. Uh, uh, so let me know um, about those. I, I mean, from what I hear of them, they are basically 95% the quality of Copics with you know, about 30% the price. So it's it's a win-win for uh, uh, for starting out. But anyway, for today, it's going to be watercolor pencils. Um, going to go for a nice soft 
um, cutesy illustration kind of feel to it. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Um, I <laughs> botched that a little bit, but I think I just about saved it. Uh, yeah, watercolours really aren't my strong suit. I definitely need to practice with them a bit. But um, it came out all right. In the end, I've just, just one last thing we need to do, and that is put in the moon. Uh, and then this thing will be finished. So let me get that, and uh, we'll have a finished drawing. Right guys, I'm calling it there, I'm calling that finished. Not quite the um, the finish I would have liked on it, I think I'm just going to have to settle for this. I'm just not um, familiar enough with, uh, with watercolours, watercolour pencils or anything like that. And it's, it's also quite a different style to what I'm used to, so I guess I've just got to accept that as a, as a learning process. But obviously I'm new to this whole illustration business, so it's just a learning, a learning curve for me. Which is good. Learning is always good. And there you go. If you follow those five steps, um, hopefully colour it more successfully than I did. I mean, it's not bad. It's not. It's not bad. I'm just. I wanted a uh, a smoother, cleaner look to it, and it just looks a bit muddy and messy and horrible. But I will know better for next time, of course. So to recap, those those five steps are: do a rough sketch, then refine sketch, then initial inking, then add line weight variation, then colour, 
and hopefully you'll come up with something pretty decent. But I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, something a little bit different today. Um, I'll be back to doing me full on space art next time. I've got a, I've got a video planned that you, I think you're going to like, it's going to be something quite cool. And if you made it this far into the video, then please consider giving it a like. It really does help me out a lot and subscribe if you're not already. Uh, and post a comment of what you'd like me to, to paint or draw next. Maybe uh, an antelope in pyjamas going to Mars. I don't know. Anyway, um, well, anyway, for me, that's all I've got time for. So until next time, cheerio. It's the way you